Well, I wanted to highlight some more of our purple vegetables that are growing in the studio gardens, but this time in the raised bed. And we have quite a diverse mix of plantings here. On the end, we have what is called fennel, and this is actually bronze fennel. And actually, this is the first year that I'm aware of it where the Herb Growers Association has actually deemed a plant of the year as far as an herb, and it happens to be fennel. But this one is cultivar bronze, and you can tell it has kind of a purple smoky color in the foliage. It's very delicate, and when you uh, rub across it, it actually smells like licorice a little bit. But the interesting thing is this will actually send up a flower stalk on it that has a pretty yellow flower and then people will let it go to seed and harvest the seed and use the fennel seed in various seasonings, sometimes even in salads. It's grown in Oklahoma as a tender perennial. That means a lot of times it will come back year after year. And you don't want to be fooled by the size of it right now because we have it crammed here in the corner of this bed. But if you let it come back the next year, it can actually get, oh, four feet tall and take probably twice the space. So again, it's very nice uh, plant. It's used a lot of times just as an ornamental because of the flower which people will dry. The other thing too is if you don't want to use it as an herb, it really makes a nice addition to your butterfly garden because the swallowtail butterfly larva really like to chew on this one and of course it will come back. So it's one you might want to consider in many different options. Now the low growing plant along here is really confusing a lot of people when they come to the studio gardens. This is actually a sweet potato. The variety is blackie, or the cultivar is blackie, and it has purplish foliage, as you can see. Now, some of the new growth that comes out is a little bit more green in color, but it does make sweet potatoes, and when we harvest those later on in the season, they'll be a white uh, color as far as a tuber. But this has actually been used a lot as an ornamental, too, in hanging baskets, and we could have trellised it up, and sometimes people even graft onto it, and uh, make it uh, into like a topiary. So it's really an interesting one that you can use as a vegetable or again as an ornamental. Now a little bit further down the raised bed, we have one that's called tomatilla. And we've grown these before at the Studio Gardens and they're a little bit unique in the fact that they're actually called a husk tomato. They're in the tomato family and I'm gonna pull one off here that's a little bit, um, it's actually not ripe yet. Of course, the cultivar of this one over here is purple demilpa and you can see the reason it gets its name husk tomato is that there's actually a husk around the fruit part and this particular one is a little bit later in its maturity it takes somewhere over say 70 days for it to actually start producing the fruit but as it matures it will break through the shell and it will turn a purple color and that's how you know that particular one is ripe now the taller one here is actually called purple, that's the cultivar. And you can see that some of the husk on them have a purple vein on them. And again, those are a little bit uh, immature. But I've got some bigger ones down here I'll pull off and show you. Again, the same thing, gets a little bit bigger. This one is actually the size won't be as big and it won't turn as purple. Now this one actually looks okay, but a lot of them that we can look in here will find a hole on them. And what has happened is the tomato pinworm worm has poked a hole through the husk. And then when you tear it open, you'll see what he's done. He's chewed into the fruit and really made quite a mess on that one. Now this is actually very difficult to control because to try to get your pesticide sprayed on the fruit is tough with the husk protective covering on it. So a lot of times people will just spray on a regular basis with an organic type product, or as I was telling some of our volunteers, you may just want to use this uh, worm and all in the sauce and give it a little bit more protein. And that's how they're normally used with the, the uh, purple sauce, uh, which is a little bit unique. Now the next one is eggplant. And again, obviously in our purple garden, we have some purple eggplants here. And that's not anything really that unusual. It's just that this one is called Rosita. It will be uh, mature in about 68 days, and it will have a rose pink color with this very bright green calyx on the stem in there. And this one has a long ways to go because it'll actually mature at about eight inches long as far as this particular one. And uh, again, it's, it's quite an interesting one. It's, it's a cylindrical shape eggplant, which is a little bit narrower than a lot of the typical ones. 
The one over here is called Rose Blush, and you can tell it actually looks more white than anything. Although if you hold it at a certain angle, you can see kind of a pinkish blush, which it will do as it matures as well. It's more oval in shape. It's gonna be about six inches long by four and a half inches uh, wide. So it's, again, it's a little bit more oval and typical shape of an eggplant. Now, a lot of people ask us, where do we find these types of novelty pl uh, plants? Well, in these particular cases, these are exclusively ordered through this mail. The Rosita is available through Stokes, and the Purple Blush is through Burpee. And so a lot of times we order our own seed, start our transplants, and uh, we get them that way, because obviously in many of these things are a little bit more of a novelty. Now one thing about the eggplant, it's kind of known as an insect trap plant. And the reason for that is a lot of insects are attracted to it, and boy, can you tell that on ours. If you look on this particular leaf right here, you'll see some of this modeling or the speckling in the center. That's actually from an insect that has sucking mouth parts. You'll see some of the black on the underneath side. And believe it or not, this same insect can be found on azalea plants and sycamores, and it's called a lace bug. And let's see if I can find some on here. It's pretty much loaded. But again, lace bugs have kind of a clear uh, wing pattern to it. They're uh, pretty much destructive, and it almost looks like spider mite damage when you investigate it. But again, the black specks and the insect can be seen with the naked, of eye, naked eye. Now the holes that you're noticing are from this little creature right here, which is a flea beetle. And normally he will hop. There he went. He chews the holes in it. You'll see all the holes. So he's having a, there's a lace wing right there, a lace bug. And uh, the holes are from the flea beetle. And then if we look a little bit further, we notice we have some chewing on it, which is very characteristic of a caterpillar of some type, a larva that's chewing. And then here's the droppings from the caterpillar. So he's probably feeding on it at night because we haven't been able to find one. So again, here's a ladybug though, that's a good one. The, the thing about eggplants is they can be covered with insect pests. So this is one of the ones that if you're gonna grow it, you almost have to really stay on it with some organic type sprays or powders or make sure you wash it off or squish them with your hand because chances are even under the optimum conditions, their pests are gonna come in and target the eggplant. So there's a lot of interesting things that you can do, but let's take a little bit different tour of the garden. And I wanna take you over to the water garden and show you some problems that we're having there that we've actually been fighting for a couple of years. So come along and let's see what we're up to.